It's Christmas Day in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Winter has already taken hold, with another snowstorm on the way. Bert and Dave Power for the weather. They like to snowmobile and ski in it. But when it comes to flying, they're fair weather all the way. That's why they're going to the FAA flight service station to see their old friend Tom Wickers. They have something special on their mind. For tomorrow, the Powers brothers are flying to the Rose Bowl. They're planning a leisurely flight, stopping off to see some friends, and even do some skiing. And since neither of the brothers is instrument rated, they're going VFR. Both are deeply interested in weather, and based on the present progress and development of air masses and frontal systems, they've decided to go by way of Kansas City, Denver, Albuquerque, and Burbank. But if they could look into the future and see how the weather is actually going to turn out, this is what their flight would look like for the next five days, the duration of their trip. The dotted red line shows their planned departure from Sault Ste. Marie between two weather fronts on December 26th and the route of flight they plan to follow. Each movement of air mass represents an hourly change in zebra, or Greenwich Mean Time. But even the most carefully laid plans must be flexible enough to adjust to changeable weather conditions. For instance, an ugly low-pressure system that was forecast to move eastward out of the southwestern part of the United States does not move as rapidly as had been forecast. It happens that the brothers' planned route of flight would put them right in the heart of a major winter storm. Others start their trip with a visit to one of the Federal Aviation Administration's many flight service stations. Tom, Bird, Dave. Merry Christmas. Hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> we'll just stand there open. A little something to help you forecast the weather. The absolute latest thing in electronic devices. Gee, fellas, I don't know what to say. Well, you say you got something nice for us. How's it look? You mean the game or the parade? We mean the weather. How does it look for a VFR flight to Kansas City in the early morning? Well, let's check the fog here. Yeah, yeah we're still looking good. Well, the prog, of course, is the forecast. It shows what is expected based on the information available. Let's compare that with what we know will actually happen. There's a cold front moving into Sault Ste. Marie from the northwest. The front will pass the powers route before morning to be followed by clearing skies except for clouds and snow showers to the lee or east side of the larger lakes. What if the system slows down tonight? Would that affect our getting to Kansas City? Well, you'd have a problem making an early morning takeoff, but there's no reason for it to slow down. All the area forecasts are moving it right along. Of course, things could always change, but as I see it, you'd only be held up a few hours at most. Tom, do you think there's any chance that second cold front might speed up and catch us? No, we're pretty sure it won't. Why? Come on, Dave, look at the prog for the last couple of days. Anyway, Tom's got that for insurance. You're the guys who need the insurance. But um, I'll be watching it real close. The next day is clear and cold. Perfect for starting their long VFR journey. Being pilots and skiers, Bert and Dave have developed a great interest in the weather. Flying and skiing have a great deal in common. Both demand skill, a good sense of safety, and they depend on weather to tell whether to go or not. Cold front? Yeah. Well, look over there. A nice big batch of cumulus for openers. 
Yeah. What's that other cumulus? Plenty of snow, too. And you know what? There's a lake effect snow shower. When cold air passes over open warm water. Right. You get snow flurries. Let's take a look at a vertical cross-section of this lake effect. Notice how the colder air forces the air ahead of it upwards, thus producing snow showers. The heavy clouds and snow showers to the lee side of the lake are typical of this weather phenomenon. It's a good idea to know as much about the area you're flying in as you can. There's always something unique to a particular locale that might cause real problems if you're not aware of it. what the weather's like. You still want to go the way we planned? Yeah, I thought we'd stick with our original flight plan. Five hours of good flying weather later, they're over Kansas City on schedule. Listen, as long as we're stopping in Kansas City, we got to find out what it's like to to Albuquerque. We can look up Don Webb. Oh, the fellow I went to school with. I, I told you, he works at the NSSFC. National Severe Storm Forecast Center, hub of weather action for the entire United States. The communications room is vital in both receiving and sending out the latest information on severe storms. These are the men from cells, severe local storms. They know all there is to know about the toughest neighborhood in the country, the tornado belt that runs through the center of the nation. By means of radar, they can tell the intensity of storms and follow their movements. They broadcast the latest weather continuously from their own radio station. Of course, pilots don't need to consult the entire NSSFC to get an accurate weather briefing. The same information is available from local flight service stations and weather offices. At the flight advisory weather service that specializes in helping pilots like Bert and Dave, they get briefed by their friend Don Webb. It was a gradual terrain rise and uh, often a low stratus uh, area. But Don, what about the Denver area? Well, let's see. Denver? Looks pretty good. Hey, look at that low pressure area west of Albuquerque. Yeah, its pressures are falling a bit down there in the southern Rockies. Should be good skiing. And what, what'll that do to the Albuquerque area? Well, it's going to close Albuquerque to VFR flying, as they soon find out from the latest satellite photos. All right, now that's Albuquerque. Now, you see that white area? That's a storm building up. Doesn't look too good for VFR. Can you go IFR? Well, we'd prefer to go VFR. Hey, Ed. Hey, you guys ought to talk to Ed Barton. He's our aviation consultant. Uh, Ed, this is uh, Burton Dave Powers. Ed, flying onto the Rose Bowl. They'd like to know the chances of flying VFR Albuquerque to L.A. Come on, let me show you. It doesn't look good at all along the southern route, but I think you can fly VFR from Denver down to Grand Junction. Now, the weather is not going to be the best, but I think it will hold VFR for you. The progs show that the load producing this system is moving to the east, so it ought to start improving southwest of Denver. Besides, from Kansas City, that's the shortest route to Pasadena anyway. Yeah, yeah. Many thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Wish I was going with you. <laughs> Bert and Dave will now have to change their original plan. Denver is still their next stop, but they'll not be going to Albuquerque. Next morning, at the FAA's Kansas City Flight Service Station, Bert and Dave get the latest briefing. Looks like this low of yours is really messing things up in Colorado. Well, do you think we can make it through to Denver? Oh, definitely. Forecasts for Goodland and Denver indicate VFR through midnight Greenwich time. Pueblo and Lamar reporting broken stratus stops at 6,000. You may want to climb out on top of it. Visibilities will be four underneath as you get west where the terrain gets higher. You'll probably get some help from the tailwinds at 4,500. Plenty of traffic today. Yeah, hope it stays clear of us. This is those eastbound planes. Look back into the sun. Yeah, there's no visibility at all if you're eastbound. Brad, we're not heading into it this morning. What causes that, anyway? Well, as I understand it, it's a chemical reaction caused by sunlight striking the elements of the smog. 
think we're headed to California. They're running the smog there. How high do you figure the tops are? Oh, I don't know, around 5,500. You know, the terrain is rising. It's 2,900 feet here. We're going to need a higher ceiling. Yeah, well, we may not get it. If you don't, we may have to land at Goodland and wait for it. The ground is rising, but the clouds remain at the same level. This is known as an upslope condition. Goodland Radio, this is Bonanza 9007 Victor, over. Bonanza 07 Victor, this is Goodland Radio, over. Bonanza 07 Victor, five miles west of Goodland, 6,500 feet, BFR. Goodland, Victor, Ford, Denver. Can you give us the en route ceilings and what's the current weather at Denver? Over. Roger, Bonanza 07 Victor, your position report. Denver clear. We have pilot reports of the bases along your route of flight S7500 to Denver. Over. Roger, Goodland Radio. Thank you for your information. 07 Victor out. Well, it looks like we're okay to Denver. You know, I'd say that briefer back in Kansas City had a pretty good fix in the weather, wouldn't you? Yeah, but he couldn't predict everything we'd run into. Well, we are expected to use our own heads. I mean, occasionally, of course. Besides using their own heads, they stay tuned to the scheduled weather broadcasts from Denver. Flight precautions are advised for light to moderate icing in clouds and precipitation from the surface to 8,000 feet over western Kansas and central Colorado until 1900 Greenwich Mean Time. Pilot reports 30 Southeast Colorado Springs, moderate rime icing in precipitation and clouds during climb from 7,500 to 10,000 feet. Negative icing at 1, 2,000 feet, reported by a beach baron. High reps are also included in these broadcasts. These are pilot reports of unusual weather conditions actually experienced while flying in the area. They provide valuable and sometimes vital information. This PIREP came from a pilot caught in moderate rime icing 30 miles southeast of Colorado Springs. He changes altitude to get to warmer temperatures, which usually can be accomplished by going either up or down. By using his knowledge of the weather system, he climbs to a higher altitude and avoids a dangerous situation. To avoid the risk of encountering icing conditions themselves, Bert and Dave decide to take the advice of the briefer at Kansas City. They climb up through the sub-ceiling to find clear skies above the layer of clouds. thought in mind, skiing, and only an hour away is Aspen. The weather map now looks like this. It's first things first, so it's a visit to the Denver Flight Service Station. Well, you can see for yourself, but for me, if I were going to ask them today, I'd drive. Come on, I understand mountain airways goes up all the time in weather like this. Not on a day like today, they don't. Do you look for any improvement today? Not really. In this kind of situation, conditions fluctuate a lot, and you probably could get in at times, if you happen to be in the right place at the right time. But that's a tough approach up there, with lots of higher peaks all around. Why don't you ask Joe Gleason about it? Joe? Yeah. He's one of our instructor pilots around here. Joe Gleason, Dave Powers. Hi. Bert Powers. Joe? You the fellas flying out to the Rose Bowl game? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, we have our grapevine. And radio. Anyway, Joe, these men want to get up to Aspen today. Well, I just canceled a charter I had for this afternoon. With clouds topping most of those mountains between here and Aspen and snow flurries on the increase, it's not worth it to me. You might tell them about the rocks, too. Yeah, there's rocks in those clouds up by Aspen. Mountaintops. Plenty dangerous. Killed a lot of people. Mainly pilots that don't know the area. You want to watch out for sucker holes, too. And what'll happen is, 
You'll descend through a hole in the clouds. Next thing you know, it's all closed in behind you. And there you are, boxed in a canyon, no place to go and no place to land. And we've had it? Right. I'm sure you know the score around here, and we do appreciate your advice. But the thing is, we'd still like to take a look for ourselves. Suit yourself. You've flown these canyons before? Nope. Well, it might not be such a bad idea to see what it looks like. Denver will stay open. If you hit it just right, you might go right on through. You want to be careful, though, not to wait too long before you make a 180. Especially if you're running a snow flurries. Those canyons get pretty tight in spots. How long is too long? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I tell my students. Don't go on if you can't see enough room to make your turnaround. Marginal weather conditions, no experience in mountain flying, and a strong desire to get where the action is. All of these lumped together could add up to trouble if you don't use your head. As Gleason was sure right about the clouds, look at the valley. I'll tell you something, I've seen better conditions. There's rocks in those clouds up by us. Mountain tops. And they're plenty dangerous. You know, I began to get the feeling those guys in Denver were trying to tell us something. And what'll happen is, you'll descend through a hole in the clouds, the next thing you know, it's closed in all around you. And there you are. You want to be careful, though, and not wait too long before making a 180. I think we've had our little look around. Don't go on if you can't see enough room to make your turnaround. And so, another very wise change in plans. From wings to wheels. The old western mining town of Aspen is now getting its gold from skiers. After checking out their equipment, it's time for Dave and Bert to check the slopes. Another briefing at Denver before moving on toward the Rose Bowl. And you better take a look at this report. The weather's pretty much the same as it was in the Aspen, huh? Yeah, the storm didn't move out as fast as we expected it to. Well, we're not about to buck those canyons again. Why not go by way of Cheyenne? Look here. We could go to Rock Springs by way of Cheyenne, and from there to Salt Lake City. What do you say, Dave? As the briefer told them at Denver, this latest development in the weather was not predicted. The power's basic flight plan has gone through quite a few changes so far. And even the changes have undergone changes themselves. Take the substitution of flying via Cheyenne and Salt Lake City instead of Grand Junction, which was a substitution in itself. Anticipated, the weather holds up into Cheyenne, Rock Springs, and Salt Lake City. At the Salt Lake City Flight Service Station, they learn of a new obstacle between Salt Lake and Elko, Nevada. I hate to tell you this, but there's still lingering snow flurries along the mountain ridges between here and Elko, and I recommend that you wait a while before you leave. Bert. Do you know the ski resort, Alvin? 
I'll bet the storm has dropped another six inches of powder up there. The powder skiing was great, but next morning, so is the weather. briefer was right about the weather. Dave and Bert do find snow flurries along the mountains over central Nevada. After a briefing, they elect to remain overnight at Elko until the weather improves. The next morning, Dave and Bert learn that the California coastal section they plan to fly over is clear. They also find that fog is forming in the San Joaquin Valley. Flying toward the coast takes them over Reno. And, as forecast, fog has formed in the Great Central Valley. Since the fog is extensive and there's no chance to go underneath, should such an action be necessary, they reconsider their route. Who needs London when you've got sunny California? You know, it seems to me we ought to cross back over the Sierras. We can stay on the east side by way of Bishop and the Owens Valley. And go right down through Mojave, Palmdale, Burbank, and Torrance Airport. Romeo, this is Bonanza 07 Victor. Can you call me on 126.9? Roger. Meanwhile, potentially hazardous Santa Ana winds are developing over Southern California. There's a Santa Ana condition here. Water to severe turbulence up to 11,000, maybe higher. Now I'm going down faster than I was going up. Pressure areas are responsible for most bad weather. Never underestimate the power of a high pressure system. Combined with a fully developed low, it can lead in this area to the formation of the Santa Ana wind, made up of downslope winds that are warmed by their descent down the mountains as they cascade on into the valleys. The pilot's best clues to the presence of a Santa Ana are his own observation of blowing dust and smoke in the passes, in flight advisories, and turbulence reports broadcast by the flight service stations. Most importantly, if there is clear weather in the Los Angeles area, this could be a strong indication of Santa conditions. Thanks very much, Beechcraft 45 Romeo. Out. Well, it looks like you might miss the worst of it this trip. You disappointed? You know it. Heading down the home stretch of a long trip to the destination like the Rose Bowl, it's tempting to disregard the weather. But everything has gone so well up to now, they decide to go west of Burbank and over Santa Monica to Torrance. Through careful planning, based on sound knowledge and judgment of the weather, 
They complete their flight on schedule. They know whether to fly.